And I think the kind of work and theoretical frameworks that were common at Berkeley also changed how I was looking at things. Tell me about that. Uh, I, will, I, I was trying to think about that a little bit before I came over today. Um, because that has been true at Berkeley all along. Berkeley historians influence each other. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't necessarily read each other's manuscripts. And that is that the Berkeley History Department takes up new ideas. In fact, we create new ideas. Mm -hmm. And because of that, um, those new ideas are around. They're part of the air that we breathe. They're part of the talks that we go to. Uh, they're part of our discussions at lunchtime when we have lunch with each other. Mm -hmm. So the, the willingness to be innovative and the courage to be innovative is something that Berkeley provides you. And at the time that I came, one of the things that Berkeley was doing was a particular kind of cultural history, cultural history from the bottom. Mm -hmm. Now, I had been doing social history from the bottom and from the middle. I mean, I, my, my work, of course, was largely about middle class students. Uh, but I wanted to demonstrate that groups who had earlier not been taken into account could have an influence on history. The youth. The youth. Mm -hmm. The youth. And these college youth in s specific terms. Um, I came here and that became very important in a somewhat more diffuse way here. That in fact we could have an influence, that, uh, that ordinary people could have an influence on the structures of their own lives. Um, and that was something that Larry was doing. It was something that Leon was doing. They were very keen on. And Ken had been there, uh, even in, 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 in writing Peculiar Institution, the mm -hmm. taking, understanding that the life in the, in, the, in the slave quarters could have very different meanings than the life in the, in, in the big house. Um, and that was part of the, literally the air we breathed mm -hmm. around here. Mm -hmm. And so the second book that I wrote um, was about that, was about how an institution like the school had to adapt itself to the particular populations within it. And that this was, this was a, a dynamic that took place in American history, that it wasn't just a top-down It wasn't the school control. providing for the immigrants. Exactly. But, the but that one. the immigrants were enforcing something within the schools, mm -hmm. and that institutions of that importance, at which at the time were seen by most revisionist historians of the school as a kind of exercise of social control, that they were trying to conform immigrants, mm -hmm. that they were trying to conform people to, to, to American citizenship, that it was, yes, that took place. I mean, that's what schools are all about. But that if we only saw that in schools, that we would miss, be missing mm -hmm. a big part mm -hmm. of the picture. And that, moreover, education took place in other places than just in the public schools. And so my second book really was formatted around that. That school took place in army ca encampments. Mm -hmm. That that was very important for African Americans. That schooling took place as a result of things that the New Deal did. And that the contribution that particular groups would have, like Catholics, had in forming a whole other school system, the Catholic school system, that that was something that, we, that historians of education had to take into account. So that had a, a tremendous influence on where I was going. Later on, other books would also be influenced by where mm -hmm. we were going. Mm -hmm.